Welcome everybody to day three at the Spanish Pavilion of Coverings 2019. My name is Ryan Fazan. Uh, they hire me here to tell you guys all about what's going on at the show, give you some ideas of what to look for, some of the trends that are happening in 2019. Uh, I've been the technical consultant for Tile of Spain for about 10 years now, uh, and I hope I give you something exciting to think about as you're walking around the fair. So I called this year's presentation on trends, express yourself, because literally that's what we're trying to give everybody uh, the ability to do with ceramics for 2019. It's uh, the means for wild expression, for all sorts of color, to bring patterns, uh, textures, and different scales into your projects for 2019 and beyond. So I'm gonna flash through a bunch of major trends. I know there's a lot of trend shocks, talks at the show, so I try and hit the major macro points that you're gonna see integrated throughout all the collections that you see around the year. So there's our trends in a snapshot, but the very sort of one unifying thing that I've noticed this year is a bit of a departure from the stoic black and white and gray uh, minimalist aesthetic. We're moving more to a maximalist style. Um, I've, I've read a lot about this trend. It doesn't really fit me all that well. And I thought, well, I'm not gonna like this at all because everything I read was forget about less is more, go more is more. Um, and, and I think that there's, there's ways to incorporate that into your design language in an elegant way as opposed to uh, uh, an overloading kind of way. And Tile truly does that because of its longevity. We have to take the long view on things because ceramics is going to be around for at least 50 years, if not more. Um, so we take that maximalist style and we incorporate it in kind of timeless ways. And I want to show you a few of the macro trends. One of them that you see up here and actually also in the wall behind me uh, is the return of a variation scale. This is something that was inherent in classic ceramic tile because we used to load the tile into static kilns. And depending on how close or far away from the heat source our tiles were, we would get these variegated shades of tone. Today we're doing a lot of this with little minute changes to the glazing line itself, or we're actually adding in some of those colored tones with digital uh, um, technology as well. We're seeing a lot of strong patterns this year. Things like the Art Deco style that we have in micro texture here on this fish scale, up on that wall there with the mirrored gold accent, the classic geometries of Art Deco, strong patterns of the Art Nouveau um, flowing vines and different floral and animal motifs. All of these strong patterns are being offset by very strong stones and we're seeing unique riffs on different materials that we've never done in tile before. Things that we use in interiors but could benefit from that freeze frame in time that we can do in ceramics. The, like a painted tin ceiling that we can capture that perfect state of oxidation by using our metallic inks to pick out those raised spots where the, where the glaze has worn away. <clears throat> We're seeing very aggressive marbles, deep, rich, saturated tones, lots of heavy vein structure, accenting with gold, again, as is normal with Art Deco styles. We're mixing a lot of different design languages from different periodic um, eras of design. We're absolutely fearless with our colors today. Vibrant aquas, bright pinks, golden yellows, and oranges and greens. We're seeing so much more color this year in North America than we've ever seen in tile before. And people seem to be absolutely loving it. There's a vibrancy to the tile uh, programs this year. We're returning to uh, a love affair with the grid work and the lines of a classic ceramic uh, design. Ceramic that is ceramic for its own purpose. It's not trying to look like something else. It's something that we absolutely love. We're getting a little bit edgy with taking some corners away. And this is, this is a classic Estrella pattern, the star pattern of a classic octagon in terracotta done in a very modern uh, and, and uh, strong color palette. We're looking for the perfection in imperfection. We're taking that perfect vintage, not distressed, not beaten and weathered, but vintage, loved, and cared for over the centuries and doing that in our designs today. We're seeing infinite super graphics so that you can take large or small format tile and clad an entire surface, no matter how big or small, 
and get that motif to go all the way through it, this seamless look with rectified tile where the joints just disappear. So I want to get into scale now uh, because scale obviously for the different modules that we work in is a very big thing for our industry. And one of the most growing uh, segments is our large format uh, gauge porcelain sl slabs and panels. Different thicknesses for different applications. Slim thicknesses, 3.5 to 4 millimeters for walls. 5.5 to 6 millimeters for floors and tw uh, 12 mil for worktops and cabinetry. Tables and furniture, we're seeing so many applications outside floor and wall for our tile today. And as the scales get bigger and bigger, we're seeing a return to a lot of the classic smaller and smaller formats. The very classic 8x8, one of the most biggest icons in our industry that I used to sell when I was in sales 20 years ago. Uh, the 8x8 and 9x9 and 10x10 squares are back. 5 inch, 4 inch and 6 inch squares are back for walls as well. The square is coming back in a big way. We fell out of love with squares here in North America for a very long time. All we ever wanted to see was rectangles. And now we see a lot of squares coming back. Sometimes we disguise the square like we have on the floor here. This is an 8x8 floor tile and yet it looks like a two inch uh, square edge triangle. It gives you that feeling of a tesserae mosaic without all of the cost uh, uh, needed. Uh, in our larger formats, in this case this is a 48 by 48, we're getting as big as 60 by 60 inches, five foot by five foot in our square format floors. We're getting a lot of off norm sizes. They're keeping in most cases the normal one to two, one to three ratio, but we're getting four and a quarter, 5.5 inch, uh, some s strange offbeat sizes. Sometimes we're squashing that ratio a little bit, so it's almost square, but just off. Just creating uh, a new and interesting grid work that we can work with in, in our designs. As we get bigger and bigger scales, by contrast, we're getting a lot of smaller and smaller micro scale mosaics, smaller than we've ever seen before to give contrast and tension to the large format, simple monolithics that we're seeing in our stones today. The rhombus is uh, one of the most progressive and, and utilitarian forms of geometry. We have it on the table there. In that case, it's making a chevron. If you turn one of those rhombus uh, on its side, it's a third of a hexagon. So we can do so much with the rhombus shape. It's something that we're utilizing in a lot of our designs. By bisecting it with different glazes, we then create smaller rhomboids, diamonds, and other, uh, other geometrics. It's one of the most versatile geometries that we can work with, and we're falling in love with it again in ceramics. I can't talk about trends this year without talking about pattern. Pattern, hi, Miss Hannah. Talking about pattern is one of the most, uh, one of the most important things. Uh, because we do so much in pattern and where it all started, our love affair with patterns uh, started with the revival of the classic hydraulic cement and encaustic tile. The classic 20 by 20, 8 by 8 uh, in hydraulic cement. We're doing a lot of it. In this case, this is a 12 inch by 12 inch porcelain and an 8 by 8 on the floor in porcelain as well as the traditional material. In porcelain, there's all the added benefits of a no-nonsense, easy uh, care and, and perfect capture of time that doesn't patina the way the natural material does. In some cases, a lot of people love the natural material and because of that style of pattern, we're falling into love again with all sorts of different geometries. The classic Moorish pattern that's, that's seen all throughout the Alhambra Palace in Granada, Spain, uh, is, is coming back into our programs with all of the different borders uh, and, and geometries within and colors in those patterns. Again, you're seeing this picture because not only with pattern, it's, it's a specific period of design. It's that Art Deco, the Roaring Twenties uh, that we're seeing in a lot of our patterns today. And to contrast that, that flowing organic Art Nouveau style as well. Uh, classic and modernist design throughout Europe, it's something that's very, very popular. Uh, in the European countries and we're doing it a lot in Spain. As we see so much color and so much pattern in our designs today, we need that strong anchor of a black and white to anchor a space, to give something calming to the eye uh, that, that gives the accents their punch. So high contrast in pattern or not uh, is something that's very important today. 
we started falling in love back again with uh, uh, terrazzo looks uh, a couple years ago. And this year, with our, our love and vibrancy of color, we're seeing the stracciatella gelati flavor kind of colors coming into our terrazzo mixes. So we're seeing the pinks and blues and greens mixed throughout our terrazzo looks to create more dynamic looks for us to play off to add those punches of color in our glazed ceramics and others. Another uh, recurring pattern is graphic design. Uh, urban uh, styles, graffitis, and all sorts of different graphic design mediums are being incorporated into tile for punches uh, of color, or in this case, contrast. <clears throat> We're seeing a lot of era mashups. Every single pattern that I've shown you today is from one era of design that is a classic that is something that people have a connection to that tells a part of their story. So in this case, we've got a classic 70s uh, color palette with a very mid-century modern uh, linear design. So we're mashing up these two different eras of design to create a new design language that's perfect for the 21st century. Obviously, we've seen a lot of color already, um, and color is something that's very important this year, especially in ceramics. Ooh. So we're seeing a broad range of hues. There isn't a, a specific color palette that I can tell you is exactly the color palette for 2019 because literally we're using almost everything. Uh, from the, the earth tone, adobes, to dusty pinks, to bright pinks, to aquas, uh, literally almost every color, but they're almost always offered like you see behind you on the wall in multiple shades. Because with these strong colors, if they're monotone, then it's too much. So you need that variation, that variation three, two and three scale uh, that I said was coming back. You need that variation in these strong colors to give it a little bit of life and depth and break it up a bit. We're seeing diametrically opposed saturations. It's either very soft, very washed out pastels, or very strong, super saturated, vibrant tones. Um, we're also seeing a lot of tinted neutrals. So we're taking our earth tones, where our browns, our tans, our grays, and we're tinting them just a little bit with blue, or with green, or with gold, uh, to give us something again to play off with our vibrant color. We're seeing versions of softer contrast. As cream comes back into the mix, we're softening our white and black mix with little hints of cream. I've seen a lot of a softer contrast version where the black is replaced with a gray as well, so it's cream, gray, and white instead to give that softer version of contrast when you have those bright, vibrant tones in some of your softer goods. We're falling back in love again with raw earth. Yellow adobes, deep, rich, rosso clays. Uh, all of the raw, natural clays that we've loved in our industry and made by hand for centuries are coming back into our modern programs uh, with modern techniques. As we have a lot of revivals, a lot of vintage, uh, we're seeing a return of an antique white. Not such a stark, clean and clinical white. The sort of creamy, buttery, Victorian and antique white is coming into a lot of our vintage programs today. In our marbles, the, the vein color that we're seeing in our marbles, as I said, is so aggressive. And the colors are so strong. In this case, one of the most classic marbles is a white with a gray vein. This is a very classic white gray vein marble, but it has a deep golden vein as well. It's just got that little bit of accent that makes it so much more vibrant and, and fitting with today's trends. The, and as we have so much formal this year, so much high design, the lazy, comfortable Sunday design of simple denim is, is back in a big way. So the relaxed feel of vintage, classic, something comfortable that uh, all of our rooms are not as formal uh, as they could be. So thank you very much for listening to my take on trends. Thank you for joining us in Tile of Spain. I hope I've given you some food for thought as you walk around the fair. So please say hi to our exhibitors. Thank you.